Hey, so, um, you know, a lot of times when we think about New Year, we think about New Year's resolutions, don't we? Right? Does anybody make any New Year's resolutions anymore? Is that kind of a thing of the past? Well, some people make New Year's resolutions and it might be something like, I'm going to lose 20 pounds or I'm going to read the Bible every day this year. Okay? And oftentimes what happens is sometimes we get down this path and a month or two months down the road and you're like, gosh, I haven't been doing that anymore. I, I've completely forgotten about that, right? And oftentimes you think, well, I just don't have the strength to carry on and to, to do that resolution or to, to commit to that goal. And sometimes Christians too, they find themselves in a point where they're like, I don't know if I can really do this Christian life thing. I feel like, you know, I snap at people or I'm not, I'm kind of mean to my brother and sister and I just, inside is just kind of icky and I just don't know if I'm really cut out for this. Have you ever been there with, with, with me on that one? I, I'm always there. It's just like, gosh, I wish I could just act more God, godly or follow Jesus closer, right? And so we're going to be talking about that today. That's the topic of today's lesson. Our, our aim today is that we are going to be pursuing godly living. The aim of our lesson is that God has given us everything that we need to live a godly life. God has given us everything that we need to live a godly life, okay? Now, before we get started into it, I want to talk about, well, let's go ahead and read. We're going to go ahead and read the passage first. So if you have your Bible, we're going to look at 2 Peter 1, 3 through 11. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. We'll read these verses and then we will get right into it. Okay, so this is Peter talking. He says, His, that is Jesus, his divine power has given us everything that we need for a godly life through a knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in his divine nature having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have these is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election, for if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, so a lot there, a lot to unpack and talk about. The first thing that we need to talk about is salvation, okay? This passage today is talking about salvation, and the Bible talks about salvation three different ways. The first way you might know of is the, the most common way, and that is what we call justification, okay? You've heard that, that big word before, justification, and that's the one-time event 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross, uh, was buried, and rose from the dead, and that one-time event means that God now declares us to be right with him. Before, we were an alien, and we were separated from him. And now, through Jesus' death on the cross and our trust in him, we put our faith in him, we repent of our sins, put our faith in him and trust in him. God now looks upon our life as though we only lived the perfect life that Jesus lived. Can you, can you believe that? He only looks down and sees the perfect life that Jesus lived. We're we're clothed now in, in Jesus' righteousness, okay? He doesn't see our sinful life. He sees our perfect life, the perfect life that Jesus um, lived for us. That's, that's salvation by justification. Now, here's what we're talking about today, salvation by sanctification. Has anybody ever heard that big word before? Sanctification? Okay, well, remember this word because as you grow up, as you get through segue, as you go through synergy and so forth, and as you grow up, you're going to need to learn these big words because they're, they're, they're things that we as Christians talk about and they're, they're differences. So sanctification, think of it this way, is it's a process from the time that I got saved 
all the way, way until I die, I'm, my, my goal, the goal for God in my life is to become closer and closer to the way Jesus is, okay? It's that process of me becoming closer and closer to Jesus. Does that make sense? Okay. And that process of sanctification involves me doing some things, and that's what we're going to talk about today, doing some things to become more like Jesus. And then finally, the third, the third type of salvation the Bible talks about is glorification. Glorification doesn't happen until we get a new body in heaven, okay? This body gives us a whole lot of fits in this life, right? When we, be, when we get saved, we get a new spirit inside of us. The Holy Spirit comes and resides inside of us. But guess what? We still have this body that's jealous, that has jealous desires, evil desires, and that's what, that's what causes conflict. Our new man inside, our new person inside, conflicts with this body that we live in all throughout the earth. And when we die, we get, the Bible says, we get a new body likened unto Jesus. And that's glorification, where we become as perfect to, and close to Jesus as we ever could. Okay? So what we're talking about today is sanctification, that second one where we're growing in God's grace, we're growing in knowledge and growing in understanding. So let's take a look at our first division today. Our first division talks about, we'll see it here in a second, that God blesses us, us with his divine power to pursue godliness. God blesses us with his divine power to pursue godliness. Well, what is that? Okay. Well, I've got a little illustration here. Have you guys ever been camping before or ever been on a hike? Maybe you've been on a hike before, okay? And you probably, in, with doing a hike, you probably want to have a backpack of things. What types of things would you want to have in your backpack if you were going to go on a hike? What do you think? Water. Water, okay. Water just in case you get thirsty. Mm -hmm. First aid kit, right? In case you cut yourself, you fall, you trip, whatever. What else? Maybe a flashlight, right? Just in case you get into a, an area where it gets dark on you before you got back to where you were going to be going to. Um, maybe a pocket knife, right? Okay. I thought of maybe something that, maybe an extra jacket or an extra coat in case it got cold or it started to rain, in case you were out, right? You want to have good hiking shoes or good comfortable shoes so that when you're walking, you know, you know on some rough terrain, you're able to, to navigate that without tripping and falling, okay? So just as we, if you were going on a hike that you want to have the right equipment, so too God wants to make sure that he gives you the right equipment, the right ingredients to live this life out, okay? He's not going to just save you and then say, best of luck, you know, do your best. He's going to, he's, he's given us, us as Christians, he's given us things, equipment, so that we can live this life out, okay? And what are some of those things that he's given us? Well, the first thing he's given us when we become a Christian, he gives us the Holy Spirit. I talked about this a few weeks ago when we were here, all the awesome things that the Holy Spirit gives us, right? He gives us counsel, you know, we talk about having maybe a counselor at school, somebody that can help us and guide us. He gives us directions, right? He gives us conviction of sin, which you think, oh, that's not a good thing. But it is a good thing because you want the Holy Spirit to convict you of those things that you're not doing so that you can repent of them and, and draw closer to Jesus. So the Holy Spirit, number one, is, is what's given to us. We have the knowledge of going to heaven, right? We have assurance and hope. What do you think that people that don't know God have? What are they hoping for? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about this year and how diff uh, last year, thank goodness, 2020. Have you ever thought about last year, how hard it was for some people to go through the pandemic? And what does a non-Christian do for hope, right? But we as Christians have the hope of going to heaven, Right? The Bible talks about the fact that we are heirs of God and we're co-heirs with Christ. That means that we have an inheritance when we get to heaven. That's, that's pretty awesome to think about that. So we have all of these awesome things that God has given us when we become a Christian and they're inside of us. And sometimes some people don't even know that it's there, right? Or they don't work it out. So God has given us all these things by his grace, 
But there's a second thing that we have to do, and that's our second division here we're going to talk about now, is that... To pursue godly qualities, pursuing godly, godly qualities and avoiding being unfruitful. Okay, what does that mean? Pursuing godly qualities. Well, he talks about some qualities in here, and we can look at those right now. What's he say? He says, for this very reason, that is, for the reason that God has given us all these awesome things, Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to per perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. Okay? Well, let's take those and let's just look at those for a little bit here, if I can find them in my notes. So think about, think about the first one here. Goodness, or fa uh, faith, right? Of course we have faith, right? And that is an awesome thing that we, we're given, the, the faith to believe in, in God. What about goodness? Goodness is the power to, that performs deeds of excellence. The power that performs deeds of excellence. Knowledge Knowledge is a diligent study and pursuit of truth in God's word, right? That's just getting into the Bible. That's doing what we do in small group time. That's doing what we do in our own personal time, right? That's getting the knowledge of, of Jesus inside of us. Self-control is self-restraint and self-discipline. How many times have you ever said something and you say, gosh, I wish I could have taken that back and not said it, Right? Or I wish I didn't text that because I was frustrated with somebody. Okay? We need to learn how to um, polish up that quality inside of us of self-control, is what Peter is saying. Perseverance. What's that? It's patient in doing what is right. Right? Sometimes you have to bite your lip, right? Mom or dad tells you you've got you've to go and do a chore or take out the trash or whatever, and you're like, oh, I'm right in the middle of something. But you've got to do it. Patience. That's what patience is, is learning to, to be obedient, learning to do the right thing at the right time. Godliness, that's what we're talking about today. To live obediently before God. Mutual affection, mutual sacrifice for one another. We talk about being a friend to somebody, right? You're going to get back to school here probably in the next day or so, and you're going to have friends that you haven't seen for a few weeks, right? And you're going to have people... We have those people, and I'm sure you can think about those folks that they don't have many friends. How can you be a friend to that person this year, right? Somebody that's just, you know, they're quiet or they're just lonely. They don't know how to make friends maybe easily. How can you be a friend and show mutual affection to that person? And then, of course, love, sacrificial commitment to everyone. Okay, so... The Bible talked about in the first part how God has given us, downloaded in us, certain ingredients, right? Certain equipment that when we become a Christian, that we have automatically. But some Christians don't know what to do with it. But what we're saying here, what Peter's saying here is, you have to work it out in your life. If you want to be effective as a Christian, you want to be what God wants you to be, you have to work it out in your life. And my second example for that is, Peanut butter. Natural. How many of you guys have ever tried this natural peanut butter? How many like it? <laughs> All right, so my, my favorite thing every morning is a peanut butter and honey sandwich. If you guys don't think that's gross, try it. It's really good, okay? But along the lines, I've, I've had to try different types of peanut butter because I'm always trying to get to the perfect peanut butter, okay? And, and at some point in my life, I tried this stuff, and it, I don't really like it. Uh, but this is natural peanut butter. And if you ever looked at it, it's got the nuts on the bottom. It's got peanut butter all through the middle. And then on top, there's a thin layer of peanut oil. Okay? Now, if you, don't, if you just try this without stirring it up, it tastes awful. All right? But what you have to do is you've got to work, you've got to work the ingredients through. So you've got to roll up your sleeves, and you've got to get this stuff stirred up. Right? And you know that you're going to have good peanut butter 
when you start seeing the chunks at the top and all the, all the peanut oil is gone from the top, okay? So you've got to really get in here and stir. It takes about 30 seconds or so to get this stuff going. And that's my illustration for what Peter is talking about here. He's saying that God's given us these gifts, right? Just by grace, he's given us these gifts demonstrated by peanuts and peanut butter and the peanut oil. There's just ingredients that are there. But we have to stir them up in our life, right? We've got to work at it. We've got to work out what God put in us. And how do we do that? What are some things that we can do to work out what God has in our life? Okay? Well, he talked about those qualities, didn't he? He talked about those qualities of self-control, of knowledge, of godliness. And as we kind of go into our to our small groups here, that's one of the things I want to talk to you about. I, I, want you, I want to have talked about in your groups is what are some practical things that you can do on a regular daily basis? What disciplines can you do in order to start to stir up what God has put inside of you? Okay? Um, maybe it's reading the Bible more consistently. Right? Maybe it is... Um, telling yourself that I'm going to talk to that person at school that, or sit with that person at lunch or however you might do it that is somebody that you know, doesn't have any friends or just kind of sits alone. Whatever it might be, but you, you want to work on these qualities in your life in order to work out what God has put in you. 